All right, uh, welcome to Tuesday. We are going to talk about six, unit module six, lesson one, and where we skip over uh, lesson zero, and we are not going to really discuss a lot about uh, translations. Um, basically, the thing I'm going to say about translations, I'm going to focus on this right here in your packet. Um, what does that say? Well, really what it says is it says, if we're going to translate something from the episode of what we did yesterday, a translation is a slide. And this figure is going to slide. Oftentimes, they look like they slide diagonally across the coordinate grid, but they really don't. They move right or left, and then they move up or down. When you thought about, or when you first learned how to plot points on a graph, you learn, hey, I start at the origin, and I move right or left first, which is an X movement, and then I move up or down, which is a Y movement. That's pretty much what this is saying. It says, translate triangle ABC, or slide it so that every X, Y value moves, which is what the arrow means, moves X minus seven. So C is gonna move minus seven. We do this in a different color, so it'll be easier to see. C is gonna move minus seven. B is gonna move minus seven. A is gonna move minus seven. My Y values are gonna move minus two. So every Y value moves minus two. And then what you do is you just go ahead and connect the vertices, and I'm not sure if that's seven or not, but your figure doesn't rotate, doesn't turn, doesn't flip, doesn't do anything. All it does is translate. And it looked like it moved diagonally across the grid. That's, that's just what it looks like. Uh, when we get to a rotation, rotations are a little bit tough, especially when they're not about the origin. But a translation, what was a, or excuse me, a, a, what was a key word? This doesn't want to cooperate. With a rotation, it was a turn, right? We could say rotations are turns. Again, yes, I'm going through this very quickly on purpose. And reflections are reflections or flips. The biggest thing about a reflection is when we flip it across a line of reflection, think of what that looks like. It preserves distance. Z looks like it's a half a box below. So when Z gets reflected, it better be a half a box above. One and a half here, one and a half there. Uh, looks like we have two and a half boxes, so there's a half, there's two, and I would go ahead and connect these, and it looks, it should look like when I'm done that this figure has flipped, right? I, I, again, we did pretty good with, excuse me, with the exercise uh, that we had with the blue cards. That we had a couple of issues there that we had to look at. It wasn't too bad. All right, so the main thing here, lesson one. What do we get? The pairs of figures below are similar. So it's telling me that they're similar. They're triangles, they're orientated the same way. I don't have to guess if they're similar, they are. Find the scale factor between figures and find the unknown measure. What is a scale factor? Find the what? What is a scale factor? A scale factor is the, not A, is the ratio of the pre-image to the image. Okay, so what is a ratio? You're going to go, gee, what's a ratio? A fancy word for ratio is fraction. You, you've seen fractions your entire life in school. I got a 3 out of 5 on a quiz. I got a 37 out of 40 on a, on a test. Those are ratios. Right? You've seen those all the time. So a scale factor is a ratio. Now, what we have to look at in this pro first problem is, is did, I, did the figure get bigger or did it get smaller? Because that has a place to, to, to deal with in scale factor. In this case, the figure got bigger. Well, if the figure got bigger, this is my pre-image, this is my image, and my figure went small to large, that's called an enlargement. That's just the terminology that we use in math. It got, it got bigger. All right, so what is the scale factor? What is the ratio? And to be more specific, I probably should have put the ratio of corresponding sides, but we should all at this point understand what we mean by corresponding sides. What sides correspond with one another here? Two corresponds with six. Five corresponds with X. Well, if two corresponds with six, uh, there's my ratio, right? You, you would think. Well, remember, the figure got bigger, the figure didn't get smaller. So if I'm going to say my ratio is 2 to 6, 
2 to 6 reduces to 1 third, is it reasonable to say that my scale factor, my bigger figure is a third of the size of the smaller one? No, 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 no. That's not the case. Our scale factor is created by the ratio or the fraction of the image, the image to pre-image. So how do, we, how do we say that? Our scale factor is always going to be the ratio of the image over the pre-image. It's always the image over the pre-image. So it's always I over P. So in that case, this is not correct. How do we fix that? My scale factor here is going to be equivalent to 6 over, over 2, excuse me, which is 3. The bigger figure is 3 times the size of the smaller one. What do I do to 2 to get to 6? 3. There's your scale factor. That's what I did. It's that simple. So 5 times my scale factor, 3, is 15. So 5 times 3 equals x, or x equals 15. There is my work at how I found x. Go down in the next one. Did, again, problem number two. Did my figure get larger or smaller? What's the pre-image? What's the image? The pre is before. The image is after. My figure got bigger. So my scale factor there, again, is going to be I over P, if that helps you. What's I over P? Well, the image. Compare corresponding sides. 5 over 10. No. Not a correct measurement. Image over pre-image. It's got to be 10 over 5, which is 2. If I chose two other sides, if I chose these bottom right sides, 16 over 8, I would still get 2. Either way, you get 2. So 3 times what number times my scale factor is y. So y is equal to 3 times my scale factor, which is 2, or y is equal to 6. There's my work. That's, it's as simple as that to justify your answer. All right? Now, what about if we move on to the other problems here? I really wish this would go down. Now we got somewhere we got to find, and we have scale factor. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip down to number three, and that's the, uh, the last one you're going to get for the notes. Uh, your homework is posted on Google Classroom. So scale factor. First of all, did my figure get larger or smaller? My pre-image is bigger than my image. If it was the other way around, if my figure got bigger, it's an enlargement. This one got smaller, so this is called a reduction. Okay? So what's my scale factor? Well, remember, my scale factor is I over P, or image over pre-image. So I'm going to pick a point in the image, 2, and a point in the pre-image, which is 8, and that reduces to 1 fourth. So my scale factor is 1 fourth. The smaller figure is a quarter of the size of the original figure. That's what it means. So how do I find A? Well, A, here's my work, A times my scale factor should be equal to 2.5, right? Because I'm taking this value, I got to multiply it by my scale factor, 1 fourth, to get 2.5. Okay, so how do I figure that out? Well, let's look down here. A times 1 fourth equals 2.5. What number times a quarter is 2.5? It's an algebra problem. It's a one-step algebra problem. How do I solve it? You solve this by multiplying both sides by 4 over 1. I should have wrote that over here a little bit better. I'll do that. Okay. A times 1 fourth is equal to 2.5. Well, if I multiply both sides by 4 over 1, Multiply that side by 4 over 1. I'm going to multiply this side by 4 over 1. Ah, keep writing 4 over 4. Why? 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 4 over 1. 1 fourth and 4 over 1 gives me A. And this is, again, this is a simple one step problem. 2.5 times 4 is going to give me 10. So therefore, this is equal to 10. Is that reasonable? If I take 2.5 and multiply it by 4, do I get 10? Or if I take a fourth of 10, do I get 2.5? Yes. So how do I find B? Well, gee, I'm going to go from the pre-image to the image. 2 times my scale factor of 1 fourth better be equal to B. 2 times 1 fourth, 2 times 0.25. The answer better be smaller. Okay. Notice 2 is smaller than 8. Okay. If you're not sure, 8 times my scale factor 
1 fourth better be equal to 2, right? 8 times, what's 1 fourth to 8? 2. The, the, the problem should make sense, right? So over here, B equals 0.5, right? So there's your answer. Here's my evidence, there's my work, etc. all right? Um, go ahead and work on the rest of these. Your homework, okay? You should have these two figured out. You should be able to do those as examples as well. But your homework was four, five, and six. The example or uh, assignment is posted. Ask questions.